Want the case instructions in English or French? Oh, in English, please. Because <laughs> I would not understand them. <laughs> Good reason. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sophie Bergeron Leblanc. I'm a CPACA and I work for the CPA Order of Quebec. Can we start? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute privilege to be here with you today in front of you, and thank you so much for having us. It is also an absolute privilege to be participating in a case competition to be wearing a suit, to have access to water and food, and all the little things in life that we take for granted so much every single day. And strangely enough, it's probably one of those things that we would cherish the most if we were taken away from us. You know, in our contemporary society, it's tough to think about these things every single day, right? We're so busy, we're preoccupied with other stuff, but it's important. My mom used to tell me to count my blessings before I go to bed every single night. And I do, sometimes. Uh, I try to when I'm not um, you know, tired after a day of being a student, um, but I try my best because I know how important it is. When I was in high school, I participated in this outreach project. I am from Vancouver. Um, and what we would do is we would help uh, the homeless people in our downtown uh, center. We would help distribute food and distribute water. And when I was a member of that um, outreach project, I got, to, uh, I got to experience firsthand the amount of abject poverty that, I, that exists within the Vancouver downtown east side. For those of you who don't know, the downtown east side in Vancouver is actually deemed as Canada's poorest postal code for the last five years. I'm very disappointed to say that almost 50% of that population are indigenous people. Indigenous people that have been afflicted with substance abuse, alcohol, and, the, and been victims of the residential housing system. You know, it really broke my heart when I, when I saw that in high school, it really did. And I told myself that I would try and do everything I can in my power when I grow up 
to fix that issue. And now as a CPA, I get to make that difference. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robert Moy. This is, uh, these are my colleagues, uh, Francis Poir Poitier and Lai Yi Yin. And we are so excited today to present to you a solution to the issues that have plagued Mahagan Kiwadinong for the last couple of years. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to bring you through our audit report and kind of structure you through what we're going to be talking about. We're going to go through an overview of uh, Mahagan Kiwadinong. Apologies if I uh, botched that translation, I mean that pronunciation. Uh, we're going to have a focus on Christine Was uh, Wabasi, which is the chief of council of, uh, of the community. We're going to go through our current situation and the problems that we identified. And afterwards, uh, we're going to talk about engagement planning, financial reporting shortfalls, uh, internal controls, and finally wrap it up with our recommendations and our key takeaways. So the overview <coughs> of this community, a community desperately in need of assistance. You might have wondered why have I said all those things in the beginning of my presentations because it's directly um, relevant to what's going on in this community right now. It used to be a beautiful area located on the lake shore and has acted as a vehicle to harmonize indigenous communities. And it was great. Life was good. But then copper was discovered in that area. And the discovery of copper deposits near Lake Osisco proved to be a detriment of that community. Forced reduction of territory and breaks to the community really changed the community's way of life and also its culture. Irreparable damage that has been caused, and that has led to poverty, substance abuse, violence, an increase of criminal activity, and dismal infrastructure, as well as an increasingly very high birth rate. So before we venture into the details of our recommendations, I would sort of like to focus on this one key player in the community, Ms. Christine Wassipi. Wabasi, my apologies. Ms. Christine Wabasi, uh, Wabasi was elected to be the new Chief of the Council of MK Nation on June 2017. She had an incredible outlook on how to solve uh, this community's problem. She was chosen as a source of positive mes uh, messaging and an advocacy of core community values such as mutual support, respect, teamwork, and diversity. She, as I said before, is a key player in the revival of the MP community for the next several years. And what she vows to do as her proposed changes is build a new sports complex, which we'll go more into detail, and also improve council accounting department efficiencies. So our current situation is this. We see three key problems that we'd like to address today for you. We see a lack of structured engagement planning. So this uh, uh, relates to our uh, discussion in the sports complex. Uh, it's all to do with relevant financial reporting issues. We uh, found a number of errors that are in the, in the income statement for uh, the community as a whole, and we wish to eradicate those errors and implement something that is sustainable for the next couple of years. And lastly, internal control problems uh, ranging from uh, issues in HR to department uh, to payroll, but all of that will be disclosed uh, in future slides. And now I'd like to pass it on to my colleague. So I would like to start with the engagement planning with about the sport complex funding. And so basically, we think it's a really good idea for the community itself. The first thing is that we think it will steer away from destructive habits that the community is having, such as abuse of drug and alcohol. Also, we think that since people will be inside of that uh, sport complex and be practicing sport together, they will, be, they will create a sense of community and involvement inside it. Also, we think that such a sport complex has the potential to improve the mental and the physical well-being of the community. But also, there's some potential complication with building such complex. The first thing is that if the, the accounting that was made for building that complex is not well managed, there could be some fewer grants awarded in the future. Also, there's some possible budgeting inefficiency during the construction. And we need to look at that and see how can we can improve that. Also, there's some financial reporting uh, compliance issues. How do you report, how do you account for the construction? Is it capitalized or do we expense all of it? And we'll actually uh, take a closer look with the sport complex uh, expenses that were made previously during the year later on in that presentation. And, all, and, and so for that uh, matter, we believe that for the building of a sport complex, the community should 
uh, implement a job costing system. So first, what is the purpose of a job costing system? It's to authorize expenditure with sufficient justification and monitor the progress of the project through a financial lens. So in that way, we're ensuring that we are managing well the construction and that we will be able to get grants in the future. But how does it work? And so it ensures that the construction are uh, the construction expenditure are consistent with the budgets, and it also allows compliance with regards to capitalizing expenses. And so to implement it, we will have three steps. So the first step is to identify specific jobs and create relevant accounts for it. One might be the construction of the infrastructure of the complex. And so we'll create a specific account for it and we'll take care of all the expenses and make sure to account for the working progress that was made until the structure is built. After that, we need to follow the progress on each account like I just said, for the working progress and all that. And since we have, uh, like for each job, we'll be able to monitor the cost, we will be able to monitor easily the project budget more frequently and more accurately. And so now I'm going to pass it on to Lady for uh, more of the financial reporting shortfalls. All right, thank you. So as you know, like our community is a non-for-profit organization. The main income flow is coming from the government grant. However, the amount of this grant is actually determined by how much we spent in the past. So in this perspective, we think financial accounting from the perspective of expense reclamation is really a powerful tool, not only for the sake of accountants, but also for all the management leaders. So the first problem we want to focus on is about what Fonce has just mentioned, the sports complex construction. So as we know, during 2017, the community um, bid a contract to build a sports complex for, the com for, for kids. And because the construction firm is quite well reputated, this construction will promise like, some future inflow of economic benefit because it might need the standard lessons for safe and um, secure and environmental friendly you know, criteria. However, because the entire construction hasn't been completed yet, we think it's better, according to ASP rational, to, to put them into working process account. And it will result to decrease the expense of 202 solid because the company, company previously recognized as a cost. The second issue is about a grant received from the government. So uh, in 2017, our community received 1.35 million from the government for a three year run. Because the nature of this grant is not associated with, with any specific assets of our community, so we choose to use the net method suggested by IASPE to recognize the revenue. So uh, instead of re recognizing the entire amount in this year, we, we suggest to recognize only one third of them as revenue and the rest two thirds as annual revenue. So next is actually a design <coughs> uh, issue. So the, com the, the community is in charge of cleaning the snow uh, inside the territory and it, they will think about either to purchase or lease uh, ski, uh, snow removal vehicles. In order to make the decision, we also need to compare the expenses occurred each year under each options. So in order to compute the for purchase option, we computed the depreciation expense. Based on ASP rational, all the unavoided interest expense should be capitalized into the interest. So we accumulate the interest expense and recalculate the carrying value and then determine the depreciation expense for each year. As you can see from the graph, in short term, expense occurred by leasing the equipment is a little bit higher than purchase. So uh, in short term, we'll recommend to purchase the equipment to realize a lower uh, expense. But in long term, since the total amount of leasing is lower than purchase, we'll recommend to purchase. What we say long term or short term is actually determined by the predictability of future grant inflow. Say, say, for example, if the government has a short desire in one or two years to decide the amount of a grant, and uh, they want to see an efficiency of our spending, we we'll would definitely recommend the purchasing desire. And if it's in a long, if it, if, if it's a long-term grant, we we'll would recommend the uh, the leasing option. And the last issue is with our accounts receivable. 
So uh, our accountants discovered there is an uh, overdue account on the balance sheet date. But because the payee is uh, the sister of our previous leaders in the company, so the, account, the previous accountants was hesitating between either to recognize a bad debt expense or not. Based on the conservative principle and the neutrality position of our auditors, we think we need to disclose the bad debt expense in the notes because the amount cannot, uh, hasn't been uh, given yet. So uh, we would put, keep it in the notes and um, put the uh, exact amount later. And next, I'm going to hand the floor to Francis. OK. And so as you know, in a company, it is really important to have internal controls. Because you want your employees to have the behavior you desire. And for having such, a, such thing, you need to have controls. And so the first internal control we want to look at is the general meeting during the year. So what's the current situation? So right now, there's two meetings during the year. The problem with that is that it, will, it creates misalignment with the stream of information. The thing is that not everybody are going to these meetings, and also the information <coughs> does not flow well around the, uh, communi not the community, but the organization itself. And so also, the reports that are brought up by the, the director of finance are too long. They are approximately 15 pages, and people find, finding it hard like to look through it and have a good perspective on the company. And so what are the, question, the potential controls we could apply for that? So first, we think you should have four meetings per year, meaning that you're going to follow the reporting of the financial statements, one for each quarter. And so we would also uh, assign an assistant or fellow council member to draft executive summary. And so in that way, we will make sure that the information will flow well through the organization and that when we arrive at a, at a meeting, everybody knows where we are, everybody knows what are the issues, and at the end, we also know what's, got, what's next. And so by having these four meetings per year, we're making sure that we will have more, uh, that it would lead to more concise and effective quarterly reports, since they will have to be shorter, and also we will address more information during the year. And so this is uh, a distribution of the expense in the organization. And as you can see, what relates to the internal control is on the top left. And that's just brought up back to what I just said, that it's really important to take a look at it since it's a big expense of the organization. And as you know, it's a non-for-profit organization. So we want to make sure that our expenses are uh, good and that there are not, you know, there's no like inefficiency. And so also, the other internal control that we want to look at is the new director general. And so the current issue is that the director general is not familiar with the issues of the community. Also, he does not fully understand to what extent his, his role are. And so what are the potential solutions for that? We think that the way that the director general was elected was not necessarily the best way. We think that it should have been elected by the members of the council and all the directors. Uh, he was elected by the director of the human resources, which we think is a bit biased because it's only one person that uh, decide for that position and that position affect everybody. Also, uh, that's why we think we should recruit internally uh, to have someone or someone with similar experience, let's say. And so after that, you know, we, we, we look at that issue and we thought to ourselves, Let's just define what's the role of the director general, because it was not defined. And if you want to find someone for a specific position, you need to define what's going to be his position. And so that's what we came with. You should have an overseas of all directors' activities. It should act as a liaison between the directors and also the members of the elected council. And lastly, it should work with the chief and of the council to execute specific uh, special community initi initiatives. And so by having that in mind, I think it would be, a it would be easier for that the director general to know what, what are his duty and what he has to make for the community. And so lastly, these are miscellaneous issues that we have noticed. The first thing relates to the timesheet. And so uh, the, they are approved before they have been completed. And we think that's unacceptable. And so we think that the timesheet need to be updated on a daily basis so that we make sure that people work, do the right hours. Also, <coughs> regarding the invoices, 
it takes too much time for them to get approved, and so the director of finance record them before they're approved. That's again not something we want to accept, and so we believe we should try to implement a system where we can approve checks remote. And lastly, concerning your supplies, they are uh, common like share access to the supplies, and so people can abuse of it and not use it in an efficient manner. And so we believe that we should assign a supply to meet for each employee and record each supply that was used with takeout with a sheet where the employee was signing it and just wrote what you took. And so I will now hand on to uh, Roger to speak about what our, our main recommendation. Thanks, Francis. So we've given you guys a fair amount of information in the last couple of minutes. And what we want to do right now is just have and put that in perspective of the very issues that we presented to you at the beginning of our presentation. Right? So lack of structured engagement planning, relevant financial reporting issues, and internal control problems. Here's what we came up with. So first, Regarding the lack of structured engagement, we discussed the idea of the implementation of a job costing system uh, to authorize expenses with accurate justification, as well as our take on how to, um, how to fund the sports complex. With regards to relevant financial reporting issues, Lydie uh, um, disclosed uh, our take on what was wrong and basically our corrections on how to make those item, uh, items correct. And last but not least, our internal control problems. Just like uh, Francis just mentioned, implement internal controls that would drive in efficiencies and synergies within the organization with regards to the director general, with regards to uh, miscellaneous issues, um, and, and yeah. So uh, we hope that this address all the issues that MK has experienced and hopefully be in a better position to drive further growth and prosperity in the future. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. I'd like to open the floor up to questions. attending the, uh, the band council meeting? Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting question because um, to the best of my knowledge, attendance is not mandatory, correct? Uh, yes. And at one point, I think about four members yes. of the council attended the meeting, which is half of the attendance. And as pressing of an issue as this is, when we're talking about you know, uh, you know, children in this community who are faced with such difficult problems, I think that there should be a change in attendance. You should be, there should be mandatory attendance in this place because we're dealing with such a time-sensitive and concerning issue right now. Right? Because children are the future of this community. If they aren't sort of steered towards the right way, that may do more irreparable damage in the future for uh, MK. And I could like add on that, I'm sure that like it would be probable to have everyone since nowadays we can have uh, such meetings by Skype and stuff like that, so we don't need necessarily to be all together all at the same place, but it can possibly like communicate to each other at the same time, uh, all the council, I'm pretty sure it's possible. Have you thought about the materiality of this mission and the risk for the mission in general? For the audit mission? Yeah. Uh, and so in terms of, you mean in materiality for the like audit itself, like yeah. from a viewpoint of us. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I would say it is like kind of high because we we are in a we are in a point where we need like to address the specific issues and make sure that everything is fine. And it's also we're like at a, at the turning point for that uh, community or that organization. <coughs> and so we need to make sure that uh, we're gonna arrive with like solution that will allow the community to still have grant and also to make it sure that it's kind of legitimate for the government itself. <coughs> also because there is a lot of asymmetric information between the accountants and the real life practice of the of their commitments. So uh, for our estimation, it's only based on the numerical result, results, but for detailed analysis, we may require more actual facts to come to support us. Okay, um, knowing that uh, the salaries are one of the biggest yeah. expenses, for MK. Um, and knowing also that uh, maybe you won't be able to base uh, your work on the timesheet because uh, of the lack uh, um, of the, the control. So uh, what kind of process you, you could use uh, to lower the risk? To lower the risk? Yeah. I would say what could be good and not very curious, you know, just a timesheet with the number of hours you spend, it's not, it's not necessarily going to give what's, what sort of impact you have on the company. So I think depending on what uh, could be the role of each employee uh, in their organization, I think it would be great to have 
a system where we could see uh, what are your objectives for the year. So let's say we could have quarterly objective and we could have, let's say, a main objective for the whole year. And so it would be just a way to monitor to see if each employee inside the organization is able to achieve the goals that they are, that they are doing, not, not only just on a daily routine, but so, such on the long term. Also, since the organization has you know, like goals that are go beyond one year, we, it's important not just uh, the employees, but that the communities reach that goal by having those people in the organization meeting them. In terms of uh, your audit role in this mission, what would be the work you would do for the opening balances or before starting the mission for the uh, income statement? Is my question clear? Actually, as you can see from the pie chart, our first step is trying to like recategorize each part of the expense into either the commitments to the community or the planning for the future or the expense for internal control. And also based on these three perspectives, we discover certain questions within the organization and try to find solutions for them. So everything is connected. I would say also it's important to look at what are the audit reports that have been done in the past. So we could see like were there uh, issues that were not addressed, but that was like kind of brought up, but there did nothing special about it. And also, uh, like, like you just said, it's important to look uh, at how the, co the cost structure of the entire organization is. And so after that, we can have like a better view of how we want them to manage well or where there could be some problem problematic or, you know, issues about it. A little bit of time, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.